Get ready for a captivating tale about one of the most enigmatic and transcendent female figures in scripture. Bathsheba is an intriguing woman who played a central role in the greatest sin of Israel's most iconic king, the great David, but who was also the mother of the Bible's most prosperous king, Solomon, and made it into the genealogy of Jesus. Are you ready? Perfect, because today we will reveal to you all about the life of Bathsheba, King David's most beloved woman. She was a woman of ravishing beauty, daughter of Eliam, one of David's bravest warriors, and also granddaughter of Ahithophel, one of the king's closest advisors. However, the most important detail is that she was married to Uriah, one of David's most loyal soldiers. This gripping story begins like this. In the heart of ancient Israel, King David reigned with wisdom and justice. His fame spread throughout the land, and his name was synonymous with goodness and power. However, behind the facade of an exemplary leader, there hid a man capable of committing the most terrible acts, driven by passion and desire. On a quiet afternoon in Jerusalem, while the men of Israel were fighting distant battles, King David was in his palace, seeking solace in the cool breeze blowing from the housetop. His eyes, accustomed to the grandeur of his kingdom, encountered a vision of unexpected beauty, a woman bathing, oblivious to the gaze of the world. It was Bathsheba, whose grace and beauty captured the king's heart. Her hair as dark as night fell in soft waves over her shoulders, framing a face of delicate and captivating features. Her luminous eyes radiated a spark of intelligence and cunning that contrasted with the tenderness of her smile. Despite her distinguished lineage, Bathsheba had married Uriah, a loyal soldier but of humble origin. David was captivated by her beauty as if an arrow of desire had pierced his heart. Unable to tear his eyes away from her, David felt a burning flame ignite within him. I must know who that woman is, he murmured to himself as he watched in rapt attention as drops of water slid down Bathsheba's smooth skin. One of his servants, perceiving the king's steady gaze, approached and replied, Her name is Bathsheba, your majesty. She is the wife of Uriah, one of your best soldiers. David frowned at this revelation, but his desire did not diminish. In his mind, he began to hatch a plan to have Bathsheba by his side, regardless of the consequences. He sent one of his messengers to fetch Bathsheba, who came to the palace unsuspecting of the king's intentions. Upon entering the throne room, she bowed respectfully to David. Arise, Bathsheba, he said in a deep voice. You are even more beautiful than I imagined. Bathsheba felt a shiver run down her spine at the king's words. Thank you, your majesty. It is an honor to be in your presence. David stood and approached her, observing every detail of her face as if it was the first time he had ever seen a woman. The honor is mine, Bathsheba. I would like you to stay at the palace for a while. Confused but unable to refuse the wish of the king, Bathsheba accepted the invitation. The days that followed Bathsheba's arrival at the palace were a constant temptation to King David. Whenever he saw her walking in the gardens or crossing the corridors, his heart raced and a burning fire was kindled within him. He struggled to push his thoughts away from her, but it was like trying to take the sun away from the sky. What's happening to me? wondered David, his brow pearly with sweat. I am a man of God, an anointed king. I cannot succumb to these worldly desires. But the nights were even worse. In the solitude of his chambers, the image of Bathsheba would come to his mind, provoking feverish dreams that made him wake up agitated and confused. His body longed for the touch of her skin. His lips longed to taste hers. One night, unable to sleep, David got up and walked through the corridors of the palace, looking for something to appease his torment. Suddenly, he saw a faint light coming from one of the inner gardens. Following the glow, he came upon Bathsheba, who was bathing naked in a pool, oblivious to his presence. 
David held his breath, enraptured by the sight before his eyes. Bathsheba was the very embodiment of beauty, every curve of her body sculpted by the gods. Slowly, noiselessly, he approached the pool, mesmerized by the movement of the water on the woman's skin. Bathsheba, sensing a presence, turned and saw the king watching her. Instead of screaming or covering herself, she simply looked at him with a mixture of fear and fascination in her eyes. Your majesty, she whispered without looking away. David did not respond. Slowly, he stripped off his robe and stepped into the pool, approaching Bathsheba until their bodies were almost touching. You are the most beautiful of all God's creations, he finally said, his voice hoarse with desire. Bathsheba swallowed saliva, feeling her heart pounding. I am merely a lowly handmaid, Majesty. I do not deserve such praise. But David was not listening to her words. With an unexpected movement, he took her in his arms and kissed her passionately, drowning out any protest that might have arisen from Bathsheba's lips. At that moment, all rational thought left the king's mind. All that existed was the burning desire that consumed him, driving him to claim Bathsheba as his own, regardless of the consequences. That night, in the still waters of the pool, David and Bathsheba gave themselves to each other, sealing a sinful act that would mark the beginning of a tragedy that would shake the foundations of the kingdom. Weeks passed, and David became more and more immersed in his forbidden relationship with Bathsheba. Although he tried to convince himself that his love was pure and true, deep down he knew that he had betrayed the divine precepts and stained his reign with sin. One day, while the king was on the terrace of his palace, one of his servants approached with a worried countenance. Your Majesty, an urgent message has arrived from the battlefront, the servant announced. David frowned. What news do you bring? It's Bathsheba, sire. She is with child. The world seemed to stop in that instant for David. His mind flooded with frantic thoughts about how to conceal his indiscretion. He knew that if his affair with the wife of Uriah, one of his most loyal soldiers, were revealed, the consequences would be devastating. After meditating for long minutes, David called one of his captains. Bring Uriah back from the battlefield. Tell him I want detailed reports on the situation. The captain immediately obeyed, and after a few days, Uriah appeared before the king. Welcome, brave warrior, David greeted him with a forced smile. I have heard stories of your exploits on the battlefield. I am proud of your valor. Uriah bowed respectfully. Thank you, your majesty. I am only doing my duty to you and the kingdom. Of course. David replied, and so I have decided to grant you a rest. Go to your home and enjoy the company of your wife Bathsheba. You have earned it. Uriah's eyes darkened slightly at the mention of Bathsheba, but he nodded obediently. As you command, your majesty. However, when Uriah returned home, he refused to consummate his marriage to Bathsheba. In his mind, it was unforgivable to enjoy the pleasures of life while his brothers in arms fought and died on the battlefield. Furious at Uriah's refusal, David hatched an even more sinister plan. He sent the loyal soldiers to the most dangerous front lines, where the fighting was fiercest. And there, in the heat of battle, Uriah met his end at the hands of the enemy swords. When the news of Uriah's death reached David's ears, the king feigned dismay but a dark relief began to take root within himself. Now the way was clear for him to take Bathsheba as his wife and claim the son she carried in her womb. I deeply regret the loss of such a brave warrior, David told his advisors in a solemn voice. Uriah gave his life for the kingdom. His sacrifice will not be forgotten. But the words rang hollow, even to his ears. David knew he had crossed a line from which there would be no return. His sin could no longer be hidden, and the consequences threatened to destroy everything he had built. 
With the death of Uriah, the way seemed clear for David to take Bathsheba as his wife and hide his sin from the eyes of the world. But God, in his infinite justice, could not allow such an affront to his laws to go unpunished. After a few weeks, a man named Nathan, a prophet of the Lord, appeared before King David. His gaze was stern and implacable, as if he could see through the soul of the monarch. I have a message for you, King David, Nathan announced. David, intrigued, nodded for him to continue. Nathan then related a parable about a rich man who, having abundant wealth, coveted and snatched away a poor man's sheep. When he had finished his tale, he looked steadily at David. What do you think of this man? the prophet asked. David, outraged at the injustice of the story, replied vehemently, As the Lord lives, the man who did this deserves to die. He shall pay fourfold for the sheep, because he did this thing and had no mercy. It was then that Nathan fixed his gaze on the king's eyes and declared in a thunderous voice, You are that man! David felt as if lightning had struck him. He blanched, realizing that his sin had been exposed in the sight of God. I have sinned against the Lord, he finally admitted, covering his face with his hands. Nathan had no mercy. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave thee thy Lord's house and thy Lord's wives in thy bosom. Moreover, I gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. Wherefore then hast thou despised the word of the Lord in doing evil in his sight? The words of the prophet were like daggers stabbing into David's heart. He understood the magnitude of his transgression and pleaded for divine forgiveness. I sinned against the Lord, he repeated, kneeling before Nathan. The prophet looked at him sternly, but also with compassion. The Lord has also remitted your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this course you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the son born to you shall die. Immense pain pierced David's soul at these words. He had hoped for God's clemency, but the punishment was just. His sinful act could not go unpunished. For days, David shut himself up in his room, fasting and praying fervently for the life of his son with Bathsheba. But the child became gravely ill, and despite the king's efforts, eventually passed away. It was a devastating blow to David, but also a sign of divine mercy. Although he had lost his son, God had spared his life and allowed him to redeem himself. From that day on, David vowed to walk in the paths of righteousness, ruling with wisdom and justice. And although his relationship with Bathsheba had begun in sin, their love grew stronger, and she bore him another son, Solomon, who would become the next king of Israel. What did you think of Bathsheba's story, and what lessons did you learn from it? This video was created for Myth Comics. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time. See you soon.